Intermittent fasting is nothing new. Humans have been fasting for centuries, whether it be therapeutically, for religious reasons, or just because of food scarcity. But recently, it has been gaining more and more popularity, and more and more people are turning to intermittent fasting in order to manage their weight, to control their blood sugar levels, to gain muscle mass, to improve their health, etc. But is intermittent fasting actually good for you? What are its benefits, and does it have have any downsides. First of all, I cannot pronounce intermittent fasting, intermittent fasting, so sorry about that. What is intermittent fasting? Intermittent fasting is a practice that involves only eating during specific time periods. So it means that you're going to go for extended amounts of time where you're not going to be eating. In most cases, food options and calories aren't restricted, but they can only be consumed within that very specific time frame. There are many different ways to practice intermittent fasting. Maybe the most common one is to have only a certain number of hours in the day where you are allowed to eat and then fasting during the rest of these hours. I'm going to talk about a few of the main ways to practice intermittent fasting. So one of them is eating during a eight hour window and then fasting for the rest of the 16 hours of the day. This is probably the most popular one. And a lot of people kind of do this, do like a, a less restrictive version of this naturally. Like they kind of fast for 12 hours in between meals. For instance, if they have their dinner, if they stop eating around 7 p.m. and then they have their breakfast around 7 a.m., then that's a 12 hour period um, where they don't eat. So um, that, that can also be assimilated to um, intermittent fasting, but really this method where you eat for only eight hours is much more um, restrictive. Another pretty common way to fast is to eat normally for five days of the week. And then during the two other days, you only eat about 500 to 600 calories. So you really severely restrict your calorie intake. And finally, some people practice intermittent fasting by eating normally for like six days and then fasting entirely for a full day, not eating anything. And some people can choose to incorporate more or less fasting days during the week or maybe only doing it a few times a month. It totally depends. So these are kind of the main ways to practice intermittent fasting. There are obviously many more other ways and also these three ways can kind of be declined in um, many, many ways. But yeah, those are the ones that you're probably going to come in contact with the most and they can be adapted to fit most people's needs. What are the benefits of intermittent fasting? Weight loss. Many of those who start intermittent fasting do so to lose weight. And since it involves eating fewer meals, if you keep on eating the same quantities that you usually eat, but you just reduce your meal size, then you should be getting in fewer calories and you should be losing weight. A review of studies on intermittent fasting showed that it did lead to weight loss, but that these results were pretty comparable to any calorie restrictive diet. Participants did regain weight after they stopped intermittent fasting, but the benefits I see from intermittent fasting compared to other calorie restricting methods is that intermittent fasting is often something that people can actually do long term, whereas a calorie restrictive diet is something that people do for a few weeks or months until they get the results they want and then they just stop. So in that sense, maybe intermittent fasting is a little bit better. The review also showed that hunger levels remained stable or even decreased for people when they were on um, when they did intermittent fasting compared to when they had periods where they could eat um, however many calories and meals they wanted. Both BMI and weight circumference decreased with intermittent fasting and most of the weight loss was fat loss. And another study, and if you're interested in any of the sources for what I'm saying, they will be in my blog post in the description. So the study showed that intermittent fasting was more beneficial than calorie restrictive diets um, for maintaining lean mass. So aging prevention. A study in rats showed that rats who only ate every other day lived longer, they had a longer lifespan, and that intermittent fasting could improve survival rates in rats that were more mature, older rats. And a similar study on mice found that fasted mice lived longer than full-fed mice. 
cell repair. In our cells, certain waste products can accumulate and then lead to neurodegeneration. Food restriction is known to induce this removal and this is called autophagy. And studies show that intermittent fasting could be a pretty safe and easy way to kind of activate the removal of these waste products. And increased autophagy may also provide some protection against Alzheimer's disease. So fighting against certain diseases. Staying on the topic of Alzheimer's, a study in rats showed that intermittent fasting could help with preventing the decline in cognitive function which characterizes Alzheimer's. But it's important to note that similar results were also found with just general calorie restriction. And also this was on rats, obviously. And a review of studies also showed that intermittent fasting was very promising to improve glycemic control. Individuals with type 2 diabetes who practiced intermittent fasting had lower fasting blood glucose levels and a higher insulin sensitivity. Certain animal studies also showed some pretty promising results and that intermittent fasting could help reduce the growth of tumors and also reduce the incidence of certain cancers. But again, these are animal studies and further human studies are necessary before making any conclusions. In short, intermittent fasting may improve health and counteract diseases by activating the cellular pathways that enhance mitochondrial health, DNA repair, and the removal of waste products. It also promotes cell regeneration and it has lasting beneficial metabolic effects. What are the downsides of intermittent fasting? Even if we've seen that intermittent fasting can have some health benefits, there are still some things to be wary of. First of all, if you're already struggling to meet your needs nutrition-wise and there are certain nutrients that you lack, then it may not be a good idea to practice intermittent fasting because if you want to get in like five servings of fruit and vegetables, if you're already struggling to get that with your like regular three normal or four normal meals, well, if you only have eight hours in a day to get all of the nutrients you want, then it can be a little struggle. Intermittent fasting may also lead to some rebound overeating because after depriving yourself from food during a certain amount of time, then once you're allowed to eat again, you're more likely to go a little overboard and to eat much more than you, you had originally planned. In regards to the impact of intermittent fasting on eating disorders, the results are kind of mixed. Some studies show that intermittent fasting was identified as a factor that could lead to pathological eating situations. And some individuals report that they have some negative feelings, such as a worse mood, such as loss of control, such as increased like eating, like thinking about eating all the time, and that they have a, these behaviors are increased when they, they practice intermittent fasting. But other studies show that intermittent fasting is not associated with eating disorders, and that it can even help improve eating behaviors or mood for some people who are obese or overweight. But personally, the main issue I have with intermittent fasting is that it is totally disconnected from intuitive eating. Intuitive eating and intermittent fasting. Intuitive eating is an evidence-based approach to eating which focuses on your personal hunger and fullness cues instead of relying on outside rules and regulations to dictate what you should eat, how much you should eat, when you should eat, etc. It's pretty difficult to fit in intermittent fasting with intuitive eating because the goal of intuitive eating is to listen to what your body needs and then honor those needs. And this is not what you're doing when you're fasting and you're only able to eat during certain times and during specific times that have really no relationship to um, whether your body wants to eat or not. So to my mind, intermittent fasting is just another way to follow food rules, to have more restriction, and to really distance yourself from your body's natural cues. I still see it as a diet and as a way to restrict your calories, which is totally fine if that's what you want to do, but I just don't want people to see it as a gentle, non-diet approach to eating. And this is really something to keep in mind if you're trying to do some more mindful and intuitive eating. They just don't go with intermittent fasting. Now, I know that a lot of people aren't hungry in the morning and then they skip breakfast. And so this can look like intermittent fasting, but the intention behind it is totally different because there you're actually listening to your body's needs. You're not eating when you're not hungry and you're you know, having your first meal when you're actually hungry. So that is intuitive eating. 
Um, if it happens that it looks like intermittent fasting, it really differs from allowing yourself to eat only during a specific time, like within a specific time frame. So in short, intermittent fasting can lead to weight loss, but not necessarily more than other methods of calorie restriction and it may have some health benefits but again not enough studies back it up on specifically on humans in order to really say yes you should fast intermittently in order to increase your longevity in order to promote cell repair and all of these things there are also certain downsides to intermittent fasting that you really need to be mindful of i personally would not recommend it to anyone that doesn't have a really healthy and solid relationship with food because it can I think really trigger some pretty bad behaviors and it's also super disconnected from mindful and intuitive eating which is you know a way of eating that I strongly encourage so those are just my thoughts on it but of course it's up to you to make up your own mind and to see whether or not intermittent fasting is something that you want to do that's it for this video thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed it don't forget to like it and subscribe and see you on my next one bye